Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about some things I wish I knew before studying industrial design just because when I was going into college I could barely find any industrial design students on YouTube so I really hope this is helpful for you. If you have no idea what industrial design is, it's essentially the design of physical products and that can be anything from a chair to a power drill to even your iPhone or computer. So it's a really great multidisciplinary field that combines art, technology, and engineering, but there's a lot I did not expect when I actually got into the major. I actually only applied to nine colleges because I thought I was so set on industrial design and two years in I actually realized it's not really the right fit for me so I really hope this video is super helpful if you're interested in pursuing it or are actively an industrial design student right now. And lastly, I just want to give a disclaimer, of course, this is just my personal experience as a third year industrial design student at Georgia Tech, so please take everything I say with a grain of salt. Number one is you don't have to have sketching experience, but it's definitely a huge advantage. A huge part of industrial design is bringing your designs to life by sketching and drawing. There's, of course, thumbnail sketches, which are a lot more rapid and low fidelity, but a large part of industrial design is also advanced sketching and rendering. So when I came into college, a lot of my peers had fine arts backgrounds, and of course, some didn't either, but I had essentially zero proper sketching experience. And of course, your first year in industrial design is a lot of fundamental, so learning how to draw lines and shading and draw shapes and perspective. But for me, it was an incredibly steep learning curve just because I had no experience prior. Sketching just takes a lot of practice, and I believe anyone can become good at it if they put the time and effort into it. But I just wish I had known how much easier first year probably would have been if I came in with at least some basic experience. Number two is designing is actually a fairly small percentage of your job. So the reason why I was really interested in industrial design initially was because I thought it was so cool how you could essentially sketch and build products like i imagined myself working at ikea and building all these sorts of new furniture or like working at apple on the next iphone or macbook but i didn't realize like how extensive the design process is and how small the designing phase is actually within that and what i mean by this is a lot of the design process is manufacturing and learning about materials and processes and filing patents and doing a lot of legal stuff and even when you do design, it's not like the flashy stuff that I thought of. You spend a lot of time in CAD softwares like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks, modeling little parts and accessories down to the smallest details. I think industrial design is pretty similar to architecture in the sense that you may think like, whoa, my job is just going to be building all these super cool skyscrapers. But when you get down to the day-to-day -day responsibilities, there's so much more that's entailed in the job. Also, just compared to other design jobs, the design process for physical products is often very long just because you have to take into account manufacturing and patents and everything, so there are a lot of logistics and moving parts that you'll have to work with during your job. Number three is you have to self-learn a lot of things. So I would say like in your first two years of college, schools really do try to cover the fundamentals but honestly when you get into your projects you kind of are just pushed in the deep end you definitely have to be really resourceful colleges are not gonna guide you through how to use every single program or tool and you have to be proactive and go out and learn those on your own so for example i had to go learn how to use the laser cutter or if you want to learn a new prototyping software like your college is not going to hold your hand and guide you through all the manuals you're gonna have to learn that on your own time for the most part and that's not to say like they're gonna let you operate some dangerous machinery without telling you how like they will give you instructions but when you actually apply that knowledge to your projects you pretty much have to do that on your own number four is you have to spend a lot of time outside of school to land an internship or job and this was something that i really wish i knew i honestly spent the first two years of my degree thinking that all i had to do was do my school projects and that would easily land me an internship but after two years i didn't even get like a single interview and of course that may just be like preparation on my end but I don't think it was because I wasn't working hard, it just I didn't know what it took to land those interviews and internships. Because honestly, that's not really something they teach you in school. 
So in my opinion, the most important thing to land an internship or job is your portfolio. And most colleges aren't going to give you time in class to build yours or even mention it. I think in my entire two years in college, professors have barely talked about portfolios or how to build one. And this just has to be done on your own time outside of all your classes and extracurriculars. And honestly, building a portfolio takes tons of time. Like, it almost takes as long as building the project itself. Also, just in my experience, a lot of our projects were very structured and had a lot of constraints. So I also did have to spend a lot of time outside of school doing my own personal projects so I could put them on my portfolio. And this just really depends on what kind of position or industry you're trying to go into. It's helpful to have those related projects on your portfolio so companies can see that you're kind of interested in that field. Number five is curriculums at most colleges are a bit outdated and I think this is mainly because the industry is just rapidly changing and since some of your professors may not have been in the industry for a while, it can be hard to pick up on more like latest trends or modern best practices. Especially with new fields coming out like UX design, interaction design, emerging technology, a lot of those tools aren't taught in college so you might have to spend some type of self-learning programs or methodologies if you're interested in pursuing those newer fields. So for example, I had to read a lot of articles, take online classes, and do a lot of networking so I could get myself up to date with what's going on in the industry right now. Number six is, at least in my opinion, the job market and industry is steering away from just solely traditional industrial design. And I don't mean that there's like no jobs for industrial design, that's not what I'm saying. But essentially with a lot of newer, more popular fields, like I mentioned UX design, interaction design, AR, VR, a lot of designers are gravitating toward those fields. And especially as digital products become very popular in comparison to back then when there was only physical products, there are a lot more jobs in the digital space. So again, that's not to say you'll never find an industrial design job, but just that a lot of companies are on a hiring surge for digital designers. So just keep that in mind when pursuing a physical product design degree. Number seven is the workload is pretty intensive and stressful. At least at Georgia Tech, I'm sure at a lot of other colleges, like the design majors are often stereotyped as those perfectionists who spend their whole day in studio working on their projects and sleeping there overnight or honestly not getting any sleep. While I can say that doesn't describe me perfectly, something to keep in mind with a design degree in general is most of your classes are going to be project based. And some may say like, hey, you don't have tests, like doesn't that mean your classes are easier? It honestly depends what kind of student you are. Personally, for me, I found project-based courses to be pretty stressful just because you might be having like five or four ongoing projects at the same time and that can be really hard to balance just because there's not as many like deadlines like you finish your homework and you're done for the day. Like, no, the project's kind of always looming over your head until it's actually completed. And at least at Georgia Tech, which is a STEM-based institution, we also have to take science and math, like calculus and physics and linear algebra and computer science. So on top of your intensive sketching courses and 3D modeling courses, you're also going to have some test-based classes, which will take quite a bit of studying. Also, just to note, because you have project-based courses, they might be a bit more stressful because they're so subjective. So it's not like a math test where you're graded on if you have the correct answer or not, but professors are critiquing your work based off, you know, kind of their personal thoughts on your work. So sometimes the grades can be a little bit harsh. Number eight is it's so important to build a strong foundation in your principles. And that can be kind of like any other major, you're going to have to have that strong foundation, but especially in design. So something I learned the hard way is it is pretty easy to cruise through your classes and get by, whether that's learning how to sketch or learning how to use a 3D modeling software. And you can probably get a decent grade by just cruising through and, you know, doing the minimum effort. But when it comes to your higher level courses, you better know how to use the software and draw properly because if you don't, that's going to come back to haunt you. And what I mean is sometimes you just have so much work so you might not go to one of your lectures on how to create like an assembly in Fusion 360 or you might slack a little bit on sketching and while that get you through that project, 
it's really important to know in the future because as you go to your next course, all of your professors are going to expect you to know how to use the software or a sketch. And that is definitely my bad just because I didn't prioritize those because I had a lot of other things going on. But just know that it's really important to make sure you're understanding how to do things while you're still in that like foundation intro stage. And then number nine is if you find out that industrial design's not really your thing anymore and you want to pursue a different field, it's definitely possible. You just might have to learn the tools on your own. So like I mentioned, I kind of realized after my first year that industrial design wasn't really what I expected and thought that I was a lot more interested in like emerging technology. And the good thing is industrial design is such a multidisciplinary field. So there's a lot of really cool related jobs that you can transition into like digital design, interaction design, graphic design, user research, etc. Even like front end web development and computer science, but you just will have to learn the new tools. So the good thing is that the design process is pretty standard throughout different disciplines of design and all your design foundation principles will be able to be transferred across different jobs, but of course you will have to learn new tools. So maybe you'll have to pick up coding like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, or maybe you wanna go more into graphic and you will need to pick up the Adobe products or Figma or Sketch. Um, so just keeping in mind that it's definitely possible to kind of mold your college education and experience into a different discipline. It just can be a little bit challenging when you have to pick up those new tools as well as just remembering that even if you want to do something else, your education will primarily still be physical product design and everything that comes with that just because industrial design programs are pretty traditionally structured. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I wish I knew before studying industrial design. I really hope you find this helpful because I'm just sitting here like wishing so badly that someone told me all these things because I honestly think they're pretty valuable points and I just wish that I had known them before getting myself into the major. Of course, there's pros and cons to every degree and nothing is perfect and also everyone's experience is different, but I hope that you could take a thing or two away from this video if you found it helpful i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like and subscribed i'll be continuing to pursue my industrial design degree in the fall and we'll be back at college taking classes as well as interning this summer though so definitely stick around if you want to see more of that content but yeah thanks so much hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one